All right. Hello, everyone. I'm this is Country Yolo again. Bring you another video after a month long break in Star Trek Online. Today, I'll talk about um, mainly the American Constitu Con Constitution, the Discovery Constitution that we're talking on that is, re is, re is releasing today. Um, also, a little bit about the experimental Starship upgrade, as that is going to impact the Starship comparison section of this video. So, I'll start off a little bit with that experimental Starship upgrade about how it works a couple of pitfalls or the main pitfall to I, i'm really going to try to warn you all to avoid is i've gotten a lot of emails about that and i would prefer to have a video so i can stop having to answer those emails and then the rough change of what's going to happen with the stars of comparison section then i'll talk about the new ship itself um in terms of as well a couple of starships i think are very similar to it inside of the game and of course, versus the other enterprises as well. The new trade console. I think the trade's bad console is probably decent for science builds. Then, and then we'll talk about the event space set and the little by source stuff. I don't have the stats for the space set, so it's just going to be still the description from a couple of those older posts. It's been a while since, since I've made a video. So links are in, in the description, or you, you can just look, look at, at the time bar at the bottom of this video as well. Um, I, I have started to format my videos now so that you, you can just click through and hover to see those different sections of the, of the video as well, if you prefer doing that instead. Now, to start off with, it's going to be the Experimental Starship Upgrade. Um, these, these are about a thousand zen each, um, or if you're buy multiples at a time, it's, it's a little bit cheaper. Um, in terms of the big... Um, <laughs> more, more specific stuff, in terms of like the big numbers, Card Game Net over on, on Twitter... Joe Stowe for his um for, for his blog. Just read his stuff. His stuff is super awesome in terms of going through it all, in terms of how, how tier five view worked and how how the new experimental mental upgrades are working for both the tier five X as well as the tier six X. Um I'm gonna do my own particular version, but it's not gonna be that much in depth at all. And it's more of trying to get over a couple of, of misconceptions. The old stuff, obviously with with tier five stuff, there were two different types of tier fives inside of the game. And and if you look in the C store, it's it's a bit more obvious with tier fives and tier sixes in terms of their different varieties. Um, one type of tier five costs 2000 Zen. Most of them, or at least a lot of them cannot get a tier five view upgrade. Some of them can. Um, so you need to be aware of that. There's also some, some tier fives that cost 2,500 Zen. The, the difference between the two is just that the cheaper tier five ones have one less console versus the ones that ha, that are that cost 500 Zen more. And that upgrade is, is, is up there as well. Uh, with the tier five view upgrade, you basically would get a couple of things with both types of, of tier fives. Um, what would happen is you, you you would get the starship mastery system which based upon your starship subtype you you would get four different stats effectively added to your ship for free um tackle ships got the best frankly of all of them and most cruisers kind of got the short end of the stick but um effectively the starship master system is basically to help give some extra passive stats basically the equivalent of of basically a a console of, of of stats um basic to make the ship better at what it was supposed to do boosters for tanking tactical for general um weapon dps science for a blend between science dps and healing it's, it's, it's kind of what you see as as a theme between the various things in, in the starship mastery additionally um the starships um changed from a static hole and shield hp to scaling hold and shield ratios. Um, that's, that's really a big difference, and that's why you actually see with, with tier 5 U starships that are available at level, at level 50, that, that they scale into level 60, and then later on when Victor Ziff came out, scaled to 65. Same thing with tier 6 starships. This is actually the most expensive part as well when they were, when they were making tier, tier 6 starships scale, is that they had to go back into the code and individually fire every single starship say hey this is the ratio let's bring it back all the way back to to level one and make sure that that scaling is consistent throughout all those different levels um making it all, all those whole shares is 
was very time consuming, which is why there are some fleet tier six starships that still do not have that whole shape ratio scaling all the way back to level one, which is why you can't access them until level 50 still. That's the way it is with, with a lot of fleet starships at the moment that are tier six. Um, additionally, with those two things, tier five view also gave you an additional console. And so with tier five X, the same thing with tier six X, it's supposed to still be the same thing, a thousand Zen, or an ultra rare phoenix token like you, you can convert to this or um there is one that you get for free and they've mentioned that they might do some other ways to earn these things in the, in the future whether they give us additionally a console a device which in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter too much and then then and then additionally a starship tree for players that are kind of like a, in like the budget spectrum of things the extra extra console slot is going to matter m the most for high-end players the extra starship tree is going to matter a bit more but there are there are a decent amount of really strong starship trees that can really transform builds when really at the high end an extra console is based just to me oh yeah i've got an additional tactical console vulnerability exploiter for um for energy d damage or for science for the science cps hey that's that's an additional clicky console that i get to put it in my build now actually think about it more probably psi energy um dps is, and tanky is probably going to be affected the most in terms of the in terms of these changes if you're trying to do psi energy there were a lot of traits of both science and energy builds that kind of like competed for slots additional traits going to going to probably affect that the most and thinking more about these different sets that's going to matter a bit more later on in this video too in terms of the two tier, two types of, of tier six um there's obviously the type that costs three thousand cent there's the other type which sometimes costs three thousand cent sometimes it costs that or a little bit more um especially if you're getting it outside of of, of the c store um Next slide, I'll show you a couple of ways to check and see if, if your tier six actually is the end game of stats capable or not. Um, but both versions have 13 bridge officer abilities instead of just 12. And at least one, one of your bridge officer seats has specialist seating. Maximum of two ships with specialist seating. In my opinion, the critics should be able to make a third one for some specific situations, but I'll get into that in a different video. Um, with 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 both with the version one of tier six starships, you have a base of, of eleven console slots, or eleven with tier six X. Commander Red Work Worker adds one to both of the both of those there. So if it's in this worst type of tier, of tier six, it's Commander Merrick Worker, like the Merrick Worker Battle from 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 the Sea Store. It starts off with with, with eleven, and you, you you can get twelve with a tier six X versus, for instance, the Fleet Merrick Worker Battle which which is a version two, which start off at 11 plus one, so 12, and then you end up with 13 with, with the tier six X. There are a lot of different other places to get these, these better versions of tier six starships. Um, generally speaking, if, if it's from a mega bundle or it, it's a legendary starship or it's from, from the player exchange, or if it's from the fleet, you're generally okay. If it's not one of those things, you have to be extremely careful about using the experimental upgrade on those starships the biggest misconception that i've been encountering with players is that a lot of them seem to think that if they use their experimental upgrade on the C on a sea store starship that the fleet starship associated with that sea store starship will also get the um, experiment experimental upgrade it's been made very clear on both reddit and, and on twitter that that is not the case and so if you have a sea star starship that you like and, and there is a fleet version of it please do not use the experimental upgrade that you have or you're going to buy on on the sea star starship unless you don't intend to ever get the fleet version for instance if 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 you want to fly a, a europa battle cruiser and you're like i'm i don't think it's realistic that i'm ever going to be in a fleet with a tier 5 military okay maybe upgrading sea star starship is is fine then just recognizing that you are going to be at a downside still versus someone who has a fleet version of that same ship that has the experimental upgrade for a tier six upgrades it's still the same thing as tier five up, five upgrades extra starship trade extra console extra device um now when it comes down to it because 
unlike tier five starships that that there's that clear cost distinction in in the sea store to know if you have the best version of a starship tier six doesn't have that so you just have to kind of know if a starship has a fleet version or not so this is basically what what i want like when someone asked me this in an email i don't have to look at the um the list of starships anymore this is just my personal checklist to know if, if it has a fleet variant or not basically you know if it's purchasable in the sea store i ask myself okay is, is it a legendary starship is it from a mega bundle is it one of the tier six starships in the, in the game of vanguard expansion pack or is it one of the 31st century starships if it's not one of those things and it's purchasable in in the sea store it's going to have a, have a, have a fleet version. So if it's not one of those, those things that's from the C store and it's a tier six starship. Yeah. There's going to be a fleet variant and you shouldn't upgrade that C store on, on tier six starship. But of course there's also, also other ways to get a tier six starship. There's events, there's low buy lockbox promo, all those types of ones. You don't, you won't have any regrets if you really like the starship and want it to be, and have its maximum potential. Caesar Starships without a fleet variant, obviously you should up if if you really like that starship, you can you can upgrade as well. If it does have a fleet variant, please do not upgrade that one. Go to the fleet variant and upgrade that starship. Again to em emphasize, um just like tier five U, um tier six, um tier six X and tier five X, when you make that upgrade, um that upgraded effect affects every single one of that exact variation of that starship across your entire account. So for instance, let's say hypothetically, you had two characters that both had the Fleet Shepard Miracle Worker -Work Battle Cruiser, and you did the tier six X upgrade on that, on one character that has that Fleet Miracle Worker Battle Cruiser. If you go to your other, go to your other character, you'll find that for free, that experimental grade has also been applied to that character starship as well. What this does not do, um, another confusing thing that's been coming in my emails a bunch. Some people seem to think that tier 5X and tier 6X account unlocks starships from, from the exchange, like low buy starships, lockbox starships, prone pack starships. That is not the case. What it does is it, it unlocks that upgrade to that starship. So you don't have to you, you, you don't have to buy the upgrade multiple times for multiples of the exact same variant of a starship. Like again, you have two Miracle Worker Battle Cruisers, Fleet Miracle Worker Battle Cruisers, um, on di on different characters. Upgrading one is going to affect both those characters' Fleet and Miracle Worker Battle Cruisers. It's not if if you un unlock the upgrade on a, on a Vobor Juggernaut. It's not going to uh, account unlock access to the Bob War Juggernaut Starship. It'll account unlock the access to the upgrade if you happen to have a Bob War Juggernaut on multiple characters. That's the difference there. And again, answering this question again, but I, I did another side of this. If you do the upgrade on a C Star Starship with, that has a fleet variant, the upgrade does not apply to the fleet variant and vice versa. If you upgrade to a fleet variant, the upgrade does not also apply to the sea store variant of that same ship. That they're treated as, as distinctly different starships for the purposes of these upgrades. Even though in my Starship Comparisons Explained video, I treat them as essentially the same starship. For Cryptic Studios and the way that they count themselves making starships, they are distinctly different. Like, for instance, um, a little while ago when Cryptic released the support carrier um, for Starship Bundle, they treated the four sea store starships and the four fleet starships from that bundle as all distinctly separate starships. So for their personal list of how many starships that, that they've made in, in, in this game, they will count that bundle, bundle relations in, into the game as eight starships for their big list. It's why I don't personally agree with their list of starships in the game. That's just a rant for a, 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 another day. And last thing for all of you, because I'm sure I'm going get to get this question, should I get a tier five X or, or basically, sh should I buy up upgrade starship up up upgrade tokens right now or wait until later? Answer of course is it it depends. Question number one is going to be: Are you a 
serious like pushing the limits player that is playing um, elite difficulty if you're not one of those players and you're perfectly fine with just being comfortable and normal and, and advanced tfos and missions this is this is not needed like at all that this is really only super needed if you're going to be playing elite content and trying to push the envelope even in elite content right now people are playing it just fine without the tier 6x upgrade so it's only if you're trying to push the limits in that content. If, 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 if you're just playing normal and advanced, you don't need it. Option number two, of course, is if you want it, but you want to wait for a cheaper time to get it. Reliably in this game for, for the past two years, during Black Friday week, it's like between like a week, a week and two weeks depending upon what things that are going on, everything in the C-Store is typically 30% off at particular times during Black Friday week. And the the, the um, experimental muscle upgrade tokens right now are only twenty percent off. So unless there's a fly sale that make, makes it cheaper, I would say at this point, just be safe. If if, if there's someone who who is willing to wait, just wait just wait about six weeks, and wait until Black Friday next month, and you'll be able to save an extra ten percent on the on these upgrade tokens just fine. And even then, waiting six weeks. Waiting and seeing how people complain about different things in in this system, you can you can start to think about what starships you actually feel that you personally have have a strong desire to upgrade. Impulse buying and impulse using in the, in this game is not something that I that I re recommend. Now, obviously, last option if you're a streamer or if you're somebody who really is, is impatient and can't wait, your DPS chaser. Yeah, in order to, to compete at the high end with the other people, you're going to have to get the upgrade token. Now, everyone does get one for free if, if they log in into the game during this, this next event, um, during this month. So you do get one for free. So if you have one favorite starship that you're going to stick with for a while, especially if it's, a, if, if, if it's already a starship that, that is, is account unlocked, like the recent um, Alliance Battlecruiser or something like that, you can account a lot. You can um, up upgrade that ship, and boom, you're good to go for for, for your characters for a while. And so, lastly, when it comes to starship comparisons in this game, in the starship comparisons section, I'm going to be using tier six X um, for all all the different stats. I'm not expecting you all to to upgrade all these different ships. I'm just trying to show the highest potential for these starships, which means. Every single starship is going to have at least one universal console slot. For these next couple of videos, I'm also going to be listing that they get an additional trait, meaning starship trait. Probably after a couple of months of doing this, I'm probably going to take that off of the videos, and it's just going to be the extra extra universal console, and it's just going to kind of be understood in the background that yes, if it is a tier six X, there's also an understanding that there is a sixth starship trait in in the background too. It's the same reason why I basically never show Sea Store starships that have a fleet variant. Instead, I'll use the fleet tier six instead of just just a plain tier six. It's my personal philosophy in these videos. I think that's the best way to go. And if it, it's only if it's a starship that's from the Sea Store and it's only a Sea Store starship, well, I show that that Sea Store starship. Okay. With that all being said, let's go into the starship comparison section of this video. Um. Our, our 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 brand new um, discovery constitution is is a warship. Now the destroyer slash warship subtype in the game is is an escort that has a slightly modified master package. Um, normal escorts have master package of five accuracy plus fifteen percent defense, ten percent kinetic and energy damage increase, and an extra two point five percent crit chance. Destroyers and warships replace the defense with an extra fifteen percent crit severity. What that means, frankly, is destroyers and warships have the most offensive master package possible of all of the subtypes for starships in the entire game. If this subtype ever has the most optimal bridge officer and console layout, DPS captains will never leave this subtype. So obviously Cryptic has been trying to be very careful as to what starships and bridge I've seen in particular that they give destroyers and warships. 
it's why you don't see a lot of them having having a Chimera Specialist seat. This brand new one here doesn't have that either. In terms of its base stats, it, it has a smidgen higher hull and shields than expected, and it has a bit lower turning and, and inertia than what you would kind of expect. Um, now, when it comes to this ship in particular, um, versus the average here, it has a bit higher hull and shields, um, but it is slightly slower than what you would expect for um, a destroyer warship sub subtype. And then when you add the, um, the experimental upgrade to it, this is what you basically have. Now, in terms of the seating itself, um, especially when you compare it versus some of the closest comparables here, um, I see two different reasons to have the mirror discovery constitution. First off, the easy what the easy reason why you want commander tactical and commander en engineering is if you want to be a cannon scatter volley tank. As a cannon scatter volley tank player, and I've got a couple of ships that 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 do this. I have one main captain that I do this on. What's nice about Commander Tactical and Commander Engineering combined is that you can get Can Scatter Volley 3 and Reverse Shield Polarity 3 on the exact same starship. Normally you have to kind of like concede and have just one and have the other, the other one downgrade. Whether it's a downgrade on Reverse Shield Polarity and, and it lasts four seconds less, or, or you down, downgrade Can Scatter Volley and it's quite a bit less powerful. With this type of starship, you, you don't have to compromise. And its, and, and its hull is not bad. Its shields are pretty garbage, which means you're probably going to be relying upon hull tanking outside of reverse shield polarity. You're not going to have enough shield, um, a passive shield ratio to be, able to be able to rely upon shield regeneration to keep yourself alive. I generally recommend at least a 1.1 shield ratio if, if you want your shields to help you with passive survival. That's a certain rule that I go by. A whole, a whole 1.25 at least is what I generally like um, at minimum in order to be able to tank with a starship and have the and have the passive stats help you. Um, alongside that with the bridge off scene, it's with Tank Ride Universal Intel and then two ensign um, then two ens, ens, ensign seats. This is slightly different than the other two starships that I could, could think of at least that have double commander seating. Those, those other ones only have four total bridge off seats. So that's new with this starship. And just like just like the legendary Defiant, this is a starship that has five tackle consoles for its base. And so with the experimental upgrade, you'll have access to six tackle consoles in total if you use the Universal for an extra tackle console. Um, the other reason why it might be nice to have a commander engineering seat is well, it's part of the quirks that comes with um, at, at the super high end if you're trying to squeeze every little bit of damage. At the super high end, Ideally, what, what you want is most of your bridge officers cease to be tactical, at least for a direct energy weapon build. With ideally just one seat that's, that's engineering at most, and one seat that's science at most. If you have commander engineering, preferably commander engineering, then the rest are just tactical. Because what you're wanting at the high end, generally speaking, from the general cookie, cookie cut cutter builds anyway, is two engineering abilities for, for auxiliary to battery, to help with all of, all of your cooldowns with three duty officers to help with cooldowns and then emergency power to weapons for emergency weapon cycle and then emergency power to engines for a lot of the maneuverability around the battlefield generally speaking uh, for high cps for direct and weapon, weapon builds you normally need two engineering seats to pull that off um, whether it's a two lieutenant seats or a lieutenant commander engineering seat and a lieutenant and engineering seat now if you're someone who's willing to do a half bat build with one um, ox to bat ability and one photonic officer ability, you can get away with just a, a lieutenant commander engineering. Which, which if you're someone who's wanting the triple uh, tactical seat plus one engineering and one science, that's generally what you have to go with. And that is what the legendary Defiant has. It has a lieutenant commander en engineering, so you can have emergency power to weapons, emergency power to engines, one ox to bat, and then for that lieutenant science seat, you have photonic op officer one. The, the mirror discovery constitution warship you, you don't have to have to compromise there you, you can do all that in just your commander engineering and then you have the other stuff for just tactical there and you have an ensign science instead of lieutenant science all that being said if you don't care about specialization seating the the mirrored um, discovery warship and the legendary defiant are both extremely comparable difference being is that 
Mirror County has a symmetry higher hole. Let's say Defiant has a symmetry higher maneuverability in terms of turning and impulse. That being said, the the real advantage that the mirror worship does have is that its um, its non tactical seats can, is basically lieutenant commander tactical and ensign tactical if you make the universal stuff tactical for these ships. While the let's say Defiant, it's double double lieutenant tactical. So obviously having an extra lieutenant commander ability instead of an extra, extra lieutenant ability is generally going to be a little bit better for you. Or actually all the time in this game is going to be a bit better for you. Um, that being said, the legendary defiant, if you have access to it, it's account unlocked for all of your federation captains and federation allies. The mirror Dis uh, discovery constitution warship is a single character starship. So feel free to decide for yourselves there. Of course, there's also a lot of space property aspects too with the mirrored um, discovery warship that can be applied to your legendary ship. Your, your legendary um, um, discovery county does not automatically get access to the visuals from the ship. You have to you, you have to get the starship for each character that you want the, the visuals for the starship for. Um, in, terms, in terms of an old oldie starship, the classic gender vanguard warship is also fairly comparable in this area too. Downside, of course, is that with the way that this ship is set up, you can't get eight tactical abilities. If you don't feel that eight tactical is worth it, anything seven is totally sufficient. That, that actually, Lieutenant Universal for the, the, the Gemini Vanguard warship can just be an, another en engineering ability. Now you've got an extra engineering ability that you can use for something else, like the one that um, that gives you extra, extra armor pens, a pretty nice one. Uh, and again, all these ships with a experimental upgrade are all ships that have five, that five plus one tackle consoles. So they're all pretty nice in their own ways. Now, if you're willing to veer into the destroyer category, in my personal opinion, the Kelvin Timeline Heavy Destroyers do just about everything that the Mirror Discovery um, Worship is, is doing. Just that you have an, an experimental multiple weapon instead of an extra rear weapon. It's much a lower hull for much higher shields. Um, basically, the same turn is and it's just slightly slower. And you have a double lieutenant commander special seating on it. Of course, for the con that you only have one commander seat. And if you're wanting to tank or do um, DPS with the starship because that's commander you, you, universal, you, you can be very flexible in terms of what type of a place out there wanting in terms of what commander ability you, you want to put there it's another starship as well with five tackle consoles and because it's and for at least for the klingon side the klingon side has a battle cloak for it i do own one of these now i'm on my kdf main and it's really fun to fly for for both just a, a regular dps build as well as for a tanky build it's um it works very very well for for both because it's basically just a battle cruiser effectively if you make a commander en engineering since it has five base tackle consoles on it um the 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 sea store um tactical um scimitars are also pretty good some of its seating is slightly lackluster but the, the scimitars have access to the flagship consoles so i, I think that makes up a bit for some of their datedness but I mean, they still have really strong base stats still too, um, versus a lot, a lot of uh, other ships in the game. And it also has a hangar bay, and you can put on there some pretty powerful um, frigates that are some of the best in the game for extra supplemental damage as well. Um, here are the other two other starships that um, I, I could think of that had double commander um, seating. There is a Gemini Light Battle Cruiser, which Versus this new warship, I think it is a little bit lackluster. You're down one tackle console, and its maneuverability is lower. Your one saving grace is that it's got higher, it's got a higher average of hull and shields combined. It's still lower on the, on the hull, but it's a bit higher on, quite a bit higher on the, on the shields. And then of course we have Star, the Star Trek Picard here, hero ship, um, the last Serena have 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 the greater. Uh, which is Commander Tackle Pilot, and it's another starship with Commander Universal, but it's a promotional starship, so it's in a very different league um, in, in, in terms of its effectiveness, in terms of whether it's act actually worth it of a starship. 
Uh, of course, we also have our two frigates in the game as well. Um, other starships with commander and engineering and a lot of other things to make it more powerful. Um, the only starships in, in the game with, with raider flanking and, uh, and a full complement of eight weapons. Keep in mind, these frigates still don't have a full um, array of offensive mastery in their starship mastery. They still have some damage resistance built into their mastery still, which is a bit unfortunate, but it is the way, but it is how how it is for them. Um, the Freedom class does have five tap for consoles while being commander engineering, so it is still decent, but of course you still can't get can't scare volley three with that starship. So and of course now we finally get to what many of you are probably more interested in, which is the end the enterprises. Here are the two other discovery constitutions. The one from the from the legendary bundle as well as the one from promo packs now without comparing them the legendary um the legendary constitution um has only four tap consoles in total when you consider the experimental upgrade the merit worker flight deck one um from promo packs has five and our mirror one has six some people seem to think on reddit and twitter and such that this starship is super op because it has six tactical consoles i'm not convinced personally i think miracle worker abilities do have a very major effect in terms of the dps on your starship having more tactical consoles is not everything for a starship build also the other two ships also have two hangar bays which can also add a decent amount of damage too Oh yeah, and both those other ships have substantially higher base um, base hull and shields too. So there is that. Um, probably the more more direct comparisons is versus the legendary um, Kelvin Intel Battlecruiser. It's, it's a it's the Enterprise with um, Intel seating on it. Um, in terms of its base stats, it's actually pretty similar. It's much a higher hull, it's much a high, higher shields, but it's a starship without commander. Um, tactical so it is going to suffer a little bit in the damage department and it's down one, one tactical console so yes the mirror warship it should out dps the starship no problem so yeah if that's what your starship you're using before and you're willing to buy a mirror warship you don't care for the other stuff it is a decent option the old kelvin timeline heavy command cruiser cannot use dual cannons so If you just use, use using beams, it's still a fantastic starship. Um, there are definitely better ones in the game, though. Like the six, that's pretty similar in terms of its base stats. Of course, we have we have the TOS Connies as, as well, one from the Legendary Bundle as well as the one from Promo Packs. Um, the Legendary Bundle has, has a lot of other visual cosmetic stuff, and it's also slightly bugged in that you're able to use the the Enterprise J's bridge if you have a TOS Connie. I don't know why Cryptic is letting you use that bridge on, on that, this ship, but hey, I, 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 I think it's pretty fun regardless. Um, decent hull and shield ratios, much higher than, than the mirror warship, but of course you don't have some of the other fun things with these ships because these don't have access to, to dual cannons, but you have the same amount of tactical consoles in total as the mirror warship with, with the ability to have six. You just don't have access to dual cannons. So still nice powerhouses in their own right. Now, because this is a commander tactical constitution, and that the low buy store stuff is getting more stuff in, in, in the Enterprise era in the in 22nd century, of course I had to include the Columbia and the NX refit in here too, because they're commander tactical and enterprises. Um it took me a lot of experimenting after I made the Legendary Bundle video. The Legendary Columbia is actually not, not that bad. Um, you, ha you have to build it very atypically, <laughs> frankly. Um, especially if you, if you want to tank on this thing. You have to build this thing so weird. Um, but you, but, I, but I've made it work just fine. And having that higher base hole HP really did help. Um, to supplement the lack of engineering abilities. Um, in terms of cooldowns for the Legendary Columbia, the way to go is Photonic Officer 2. 
on in the lieutenant commander's science seat um my opinion that is just just about the best way to go with it you really can't do ox to bad with this ship i mean you don't have enough engineering seats to be able to pull them off um still um it's got some nice cool visuals as well i generally default to the 22nd century ones versus the one in the tmp era of star, star trek but that's just me the nsx core is more of is much more for a typical starship um you kind of have to use that other tank ground universal as engineering so you are pretty engineering heavy for a dps starship i actually like the nx as well for it's 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 an interesting tanking platform as well a bit low on the raw stats so i kind of have to pilot that one like i pilot the Talis temporal warbird um in terms of tanking but um it, it does do its job whenever you if that's your type of thing um in terms of Miracle Starships, of course, I have to end with, with, with some of these and one of the next slide. Just because Miracle Starships, if you have the experimental upgrade on these Starships, they have access to two Universal Consoles instead of just one. Um, although the Legendary Sovereign has gotten a lot of spotlight, in my opinion, it's just because the, the Tucker Miracle Worker Cruiser from the Sea Store just looks so ugly frankly that most players passed on it entirely like really entirely um but and but this is one of the advantages of being kdf side because the kdf miracle cruiser is actually not that bad in, in terms of its looks it's, it's quite a bit more bearable in my personal op opinion its base stats are, are a smidge higher for what what you needed to do and its seating isn't that bad or much different than the legendary sovereign either so Which, of course, I mean, I guess now thinking about it, it makes sense why Timberwolf, honestly, is his KDF tank used this ship because in terms of the terms of the KDF, yeah, it's pretty much this, or you use the Merc Worker Flight Deck Carrier um, as just about some, some of the best tanking platforms in, in the game for them right now. Very solid overall. Of course, these don't have, don't have access to dual cannons, so they perform very differently. If you ever want to use dual cannons, so they don't like this. The Maki Raider or the Bob War Juggernaut are definitely the standouts. The Maki Raider is from the Lobi store, and the Bob War Juggernaut is from um from, from Promo Packs. There's also the Zenkathi Zentar, but that's more of a torpedo-based platform. And this starship, because it doesn't have like command seating, it's clearly not meant to be a torpedo platform, in my opinion. The Intel stuff that affects torpedoes, I, I don't feel it's that particularly strong in my opinion. Um, and, and if Intel really is strong for torpedoes, then just use the Talis Temporal Warbird that has Commander Intel, Lieutenant Commander Command. Monkey Raider is pretty nice in that it's a 7 tackle console starship with improved Raider flanking and very flexible bridge offer scene, which makes this a starship that can pretty much change with, with the meta. Um, as long as the meta doesn't involve other specializations alongside Barrack Worker. All right. So with that all said, yeah, I was lazy to change these pictures. But now we'll talk about the other stuff, the ship, like the trading console and such. The Starship trait, it's called Tearing Goodbye. On a takedown, you get extra crit chance and accuracy that can stack up th to three times. This is just like the issues with the Ruin of Our Enemies trait. In which that rid of your enemies is technically a great trait, but you have to be the one doing the takedown. Because it's not assist on a say, but it actually has to be the you you do the killing blow. This is not a, a this is not gonna be a reliable trait. Just just like most people have switched out of rune of our enemies for a lot of their traits, unless they are very confident that they are the highest DPS in starship in their group. It's not a trait to use. Additionally, even with that limitation, it's critical chance and accuracy. So whenever you get towards the high end, what a lot of TV scavengers are looking for more is stuff that affects crit severity or haste or something like that in terms of direct energy weapon builds. Crit chance and accuracy, unless it's ridiculously substantial crit chance and accuracy, like probably... For stacking the three times, it's, I'm probably guessing it needs to be like seven and a half percent crit chance or something like that for 
many of the high-end DPS players that actually care about this trait. Because there are other things that, are, that can also give that or more, and it's super, super, super reliable, frankly. Um, and also, you have to already be doing tons of damage for you to get those takedowns anyway, so it's got to be a trait that's already enhancing your other traits that's already going on. The console itself, um, it says passively that it gives you extra hull capacity as well as crit severity. Depending upon how good that crit severity is, like how high that number actually is, it might actually be a filler uh, direction energy weapon DPS console. Especially since, generally speaking, starships in the Affinity Lockbox typically um, have their trading console um, available for much cheaper on, on the exchange for the opposite faction when there isn't an, an equivalent for the, opposite, for the opposite faction. Which means if this is maybe a 10% crit D console, hopefully it's like 10 or 15%, something like that, then this could hopefully be a filler crit severity console for very high, um, like, engineering console based like starships on on the kdf side who want to do lots of who wants to do lots of damage in like a cruiser or something hopefully that's that's the case we we will see the active is called an in, in, interphasic shift from from the, the description what it sounds like is that it should be a meta um science clicky um because it's a very very small a, a, aoe damage very small, but if enemies are inside of that small radius, it does a lot of damage, like a, like a lot of physical damage, and it stops them from moving for a little bit. So you need a lot of control to get them pulled in so that they stay in that area. So science captains are going to really benefit, well, exotic-based builds for space are going to really benefit from, from this. If you're trying to use this just as, as a general clicky, it's probably not going to be, be that effective, which I th I I think is a great way, way to balance the the console in general. From the low buy store, we have a new twenty second century face pistol and make a pulse rifle. People have been asking for for this rifle for a long time, basically since ESD was revamped. Which, huh? Now that I think about it, it was revamped at about the time that I joined the game. So, well, I technically knew I technically saw old ESD, the old I guess version two of ESD or whatever. Um, but then within a month or two, the, um, the, the mission surface tension came out along with, with the revamp of ESD because they used that as basically like, we're destroying ESD and we're going to rebuild it. And of course, with the Iconia War mission around ESD, they, they didn't revamp ESD again. I don't know. And the invasion of Kronos, like they didn't revamp Kronos. But, um, the Pulse Rifle people are going to get that one because of the looks, frankly. It's it doesn't sound great. The face pistol sounds much better. It may not be the best DPS pistol, but um, it's 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 got the quality thing like the plasma piercing beam rifle that many of you pointed out to me a little while ago. They're like, why aren't you suggesting this plasma rifle for for um, for budget builds? Because it's a really easy to use one. And yeah, I tried it out. It's a great rifle. Um, and it said this face pistol sounds like it's going to be very similar in terms of, 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 of its quality of life stuff, um, just like that, that weapon. Not necessarily the highest DPS probably, but very nice and easy to use. Which for ground combat, when a lot of players just hate and loathe ground combat, that's, a, that's something that's probably welcome. Oh yeah, um, and keep in mind, Lobi weapons are 50 Lobi. They're always 50, 50 low buy. Um, the low buy store is set. Um, at least low buy weapons and ground are 50 low buy. So, so, so for space is 200 generally. Um, for the new low buy store sets, unlike some of the other sets that have been recently released, this does not sound like a set that you, you can just throw into any cookie cutter build and have it just increase your, your damage. This set is clearly aimed towards toward um, energy exotic builds or psi energy builds. What I've typically said on the, on this channel, basically builds that are kind of like a blend between energy energy based damage as well as ability based damage like gravity will, Titan's rift, subspace vortex. Those those different types of things. 
So every single one of these pieces does something to help with that. So the console itself gives you power transfer rate and max weapon power. And its other thing that's passive is what we would kind of consider the activable for most um, for most consoles. Drain abilities lower your weapon power cost reduction for, for a few seconds. And I'm sure like today when people start looking at stuff, we'll be able to see the exact stats of that. This is really screaming, hey, you basically, if, if you want to do a Psy Energy, especially a Psy Energy tank, maybe you, sh you should focus more on drain abilities rather than, than control abilities besides Gravity Wall, which is, which is interesting. Um, I haven't really focused that much on drain abilities in the game. I've kind of considered them like lackluster and not great. Uh, maybe something like this from the Blue Eye Store is going to help players more experiment with drain abilities and start complaining more to Cryptic saying, hey, if you want us to use drain abilities for our Psy Energy builds, how about you boost them so that they do more for us? So if you want us to have drain abilities focus more towards Psy Energy tanking, we got to have these things do more for us. Maybe that starts doing some more gradual changes over, over time for the game. The Spatial Torpedo. Um, um, it's extra proc effectively. It's not a proc, but it's just if it happens to hit a, a target on, on a facing that doesn't have shields, it does even more damage. I don't know how much that is, but hopefully with Jet's balancing thing, it's that it does a lot more damage, ideally. Now that I think about it, I think the reason why it's worded this way is because there is an ability called Torpedo Transport Warhead that can, ha that can, that can allow you to, to just bypass shields altogether. And um, it specifically says hitting Starship on an empty shield facing so that if you try to use Transport Warhead to just bypass shields, that while well, the shield facing still is there, so it's still, you still don't get the proc off of it. Which is why I think this is probably a, this is meant to probably be a really strong DPS torpedo if you can reliably lower um, shield facings on, on enemy starships, or you have an ally who's able to have a really strong drain build and is lowering the shields of, of enemies that, that you're fighting. I'm sure Augie is going to do um, some DPS tests to see if this is actually a good torpedo or if it's only going to be useful on Psy energy based builds. The one thing that's kind of the most lackluster from what I can see of these three things is the wide arc face cannons. Its proc basically is when you hit an enemy with no shields, it gives you a boost to energy and projectile damage. So maybe for torpedo builds, Augie might actually use the, the torpedo and the phase cannons um, just on a, star, on a torpedo starship that has um, five forward weapons. Just like so he can have these phase cannons basically doing that proc whenever a target doesn't have, have shields so that his torpedoes can do more damage, especially this torpedo can do more damage. If that's worthwhile, maybe that's what he'll be using. If not, then just something else. He can probably just keep some of the same build that he's, he's been doing. The two-piece sounds real, really weak, honestly, and it has a lot of downsides. I personally think if you actually care about the careless overload clicky, you're going to need to get the full three-piece. The two-piece that gives you care, like the careless overload um, ability, it is a weapon enhancement override. That's that effectively stops the enhancements, any any other enhancements that are happening on on your weapons. What it does is it increases firing rate, damage, and targets hit with the one or two weapons that you have to have equipped for a few seconds. Afterwards, they're offline. That offline can be removed if you have the full three piece, and it can be used more often. What I'm worried about, so so two things. Um, first off, this only affects two weapons on, on your build. Any build is going to have more than two weapons. Even the worst, even the lowest number of weapon starships, science vessels, still have six. 
even science raiders called scout ships ha still have six weapon slots on them so you still have four other weapon slots potentially trying to fire too and so what sucks about this as well is that it overrides the, those weapons and so what that probably means even if you have the thing um, offline thing no longer affecting them probably the over weapon has an override that they're, that they're describing in, in the text actually probably means that it just cancels whatever enhancements that, that is currently affecting the starship so let's say hypothetically you're using cannon scatter volley and it's using cannon scatter volley for the next 14 seconds and then two seconds into that you, you use careless overload and maybe it's going for like five, six, seven, eight, ten seconds or something. I'm guessing a few is so probably like five or six seconds. Um, great. Well, when that goes off, well, you aren't going to be using Cancer Vault again for another like five, six seconds. But because it was already canceled before to make this overload happen, now you have a cannon. On the forward part of your starship, that is not you using can scar volley. That sucks. Additionally, as well, the other part to think about, well, another reason why this would be really hard to use on, on a true like cannon based build, why it has to be a cyanide sheet or maybe a, a torpedo build. Basically, ever every high end on cannon build that I found, every single one of them. All their four weapon slots are dual cannons or a white arc dual cannon all of them and none of them have a torpedo on their forward um facing none of them a couple of builds that use three pieces like anti-proton or polaron or plasma they're using like the omni and the torpedo on the build just for the three piece and they slot them in rear weapon slots for that or they'll have one the forward slot because they only have one rear slot like like, like, like the Maki raider otherwise like it's all the forward slots are going to be dual cannons is that just what does the most damage at the, the super high end for energy based bills and that they shouldn't be using torpedoes a torpedo is fine in the forward arc if you're using beams but clearly, this is a wide arc face cannon, not a beam. Of course, there's also going to be things with Space Barbie because it, it looks like it's using the visuals from phase, phase um, dual beam banks and not phase cannons um, from the exchange. And so if you actually want a full Space Barbie, you're actually going to be used using phase beam arrays instead of phase cannons with, with this starship. And so you've got some inconsistencies with your weapon enhancements in there, with visuals and things. There's there there are a lot of potential issues with this thing. If you can somehow manage to get around those quirks, maybe the maybe maybe this sounds really good. I see this as there's probably gonna be issues with it. That's just my warning. Um alongside that though, we have the new event. Um in which we can earn a new um, psi energy base um, space set for it. Now, just glancing on what the special things on these four pieces are supposed to be, we'll be getting the stat. Like, I'm, I'm sure when this thing posts, there'll be stats for like circling around. Um, the two that sound good is the deflector and the shields. Technically, the engines might be decent as well. So it says basically that that control abilities add we weapon amplification. Weapon amplification is what crit severity is called in in the skill tree. As well as as Yupi says, extra EPG based on weapon amplification. My big question right here, because we're seeing weapon amplification instead of crit severity, are they saying that because? only stuff that that's that's directly affecting the skill tree for weapon amplification is being added um or is it because i don't know 
or is, or is it because they want to be fancy with with, with the wording? Um, there have been lots of other things that that Cryptic has tried to add to the game when when they use stuff directly from from the skill tree for their wording that has made things really weak. Case in point, um, Lorca's custom firing controls. It was it was abysmally weak in terms in terms of crit chance when it when it originally released to the point that a couple of people were were doing posts on Reddit showing like, hey, um, Cryptic. This console is not worth it at all. I, I know you're wanting this to be good for the two piece, but like the console on its own should be somewhat decent, and it's just not. The point that we're probably just gonna gonna ignore this altogether if you, if you don't buff this. So, so like, all right, we'll buff it. I'm just worried because of how that this is worded, and how this thing could be used. And it's also mainly the engines and the two piece. It's gonna be interesting to know you know are, are people going to notice if this is good or not do, do enough people play science that are active on like reddit and twitter as such gonna notice this or not because i mean like if, if this stuff is if this stuff is really good f f for a two-piece like I mean, i'm hoping that it is for synergy that ideally you'd have the imperial rift space set two-piece alongside the the temporal defense reputations two-piece for a two-piece of extra epg that um epg from crit and then the temporal defenses two piece that gives you extra 25 percent on your on, on your all over damage or over time stuff that's going on in space i'm hoping that's the way that things play out um but again a lot of a lot of y'all that are more numbery one with you get this i the community really needs you to try out this stuff and try out everything Getting the three piece for the Weapon Bites Mycelium Emitter thing that Jula's ship, Jula's ship um, used in one of the recent missions, it's a big cost to get the three piece. I, I wish this was, this was a five piece set bonus with, with a deflector in there so that you had the potential to have the, the three piece with this emitter plus the two piece temporal defense thing. I feel the temporal defense two pieces. In terms of at least mid-level science stuff, you probably should be using the Temple Defense 2-piece. It's my personal opinion on things. And the 3 piece and 4-piece is, is balanced around the Weaponized Mycelium Emitter. But again, that's not going to be that pow as powerful because you don't, you don't have the Temple Defense 2-piece. So I don't know how good this is actually going to be for a clicky. It, hopefully it's a relatively low cooldown. And it actually does great damage to supplement the fact that all the other, your other science abilities would be doing quite a bit less DPS because you don't have the temporal defense two piece. Okay, there's me with my rant over. Let's let's move on and talk about the the end of this now because I guess we're here now. Um, for TLDR, um, we have a new lockbox warship. Again, it's fed only, um, and it's got it's got double commander. Um, it's the first double commander starship that I'm aware of in the game that actually has a full five uh, bridge officer seats. The other two only had four, so that, that is something. Um, if you have access already to a Kelvin Destroyer or the Legendary Defiant, the ship should perform, in my opinion, relatively similarly in terms of like you no know, performance, DPS, maneuverability to those ships. So if you have one. You're not going to be missing all that much if you skip on this ship if you have one of those things already. Again, it is a lockbox starship from Infinity Lockboxes, so if you have one of those lockboxes sitting around, then yeah, you can already get this without having to do any more additional um, RNG loot, loot, loot box stuff. There is still hate, obviously, because of this, because it's another Federation only starship during the year of Klingon. Hopefully, the legendary bundle for the KDF is worth it next year for that, for the delay of non-KDF starships during all of this. It's why I've told a lot of you over time to just not start a KDF character for a while because, well, they're treating this whole mount as the like an, like, like an expansion or revamp for KDF players. So it's, it would kind of suck if you started a new KDF captain and then they're like waiting months to play the next couple missions because they're, they're revamping them. 
Now, in terms of why you would want the new Federation-only Discovery um, warship, first off, it'll give you extra visual kit bash options, mirror kit bash options for the Discovery Constitutions, because there's two other ones in the game, the Legend one as well as the Merc Worker one. Um, it is another Commander Tactical variant um, of, of the various Constitutions in, in the game. Um, the only um, other enterprise in, in the game that has commander tactical is is the escorts so having something like like this that's kind of that's like a real constitution that's commander tactical is definitely a, a nice change of pace all the rest of ones were cruisers and so this is something that is a little bit different additionally from a non something like that, that standpoint if you're wanting to do a can scatter volley tank this is a decent option because it has can scatter volley three can test Scar Valley 3 plus over Shield Polarity 3. Um, there are some other starships that have slightly better base stats, but if you like having both the concept of both those things on your starship and you're okay with not having really any unique consoles to help you out, um, they don't have tables like this and, and nothing else, it is a um, solid starship. And from a DPS standpoint, you can do a, a complete Ox to Bat build. Um, in terms of the engineering abilities that you need, all in just one um, seat, and you still have access to Khmer Tactical, and you can you can get fit in three Supreme Roman operatives and eight tactical abilities on this starship. So there are there are those up, upsides. We do have Europe playing on part two. Um, but that's that's giving us some more new revamped missions and TFOs and such, and the new space space set earnable through through the event. If this was STO three years ago, this new space set would have been a mission reward thing. That would have come out in pieces, one piece each week for four weeks. Because we're in, we're in FOMO Star Trek Online now, it's only earnable for a short time. It is the way with, with the changing times. The trading console from, from, from this new lockbox ship, the trait is not gonna be that great. At least, at least that's my guess. Giving stacking crit chance and accuracy will last for a few seconds, and you have to do the killing blow on enemies to get it. It runs in the same issue that one of our enemies um, did a little while back when that was released in, into the game. Decent trade until people realize, oh, I have to do the killing blow. Great. Well, if everyone's running this thing, then it's only going to benefit a few captains. Well, for the rest of them, they might as well slot in something else. The console should be. Um, if the AOE hook is actually good DPS, um, then it should be a solid exotic DPS clicky console. So it also depends on how many base critical severities on the console. It could be a filler, um, could, it could just be a filler damage console as well. Especially for KDF that's on a budget because generally speaking, Infinity um, Lockbox Starships generally have their trading console um, in the... Um, Training console boxes from 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 loot boxes that that come out for the opposite faction that can't access the starship and there's no starship blanket that has the trader console. So ideally, it, it becomes a budget crit crit D console for the KDF side of things, or more affordable uh, crit D console for the KDF side of things. For the Lobi store, we have two lo new Lobi weapons. Um, if you think those things sound cool or look cool, then you you can get them. Um, we also have a new low weapon set that gives us a pulse cannon, which is a dual cannon, along with a torpedo and, and console. Um, the console is fine. Um, if you're doing site energy, it should be a fine thing just to, to fill on its own. The torpedo sounds like it's going to be okay um, for torpedo based builds. I don't know if it's going to be absolutely the best, and so I'm hoping Augie does some. DPS testing to, to really let us know. The cannon, I don't think it's good enough on, on its own. I think you need the full three piece for the cannon to be, to be worth it. There's also some going to be some visual issues with this thing if they don't release pulse dual cannons um, with the same visuals as this one because pulse phasers um, and the other types of pulse weapons did have slightly different visuals. And in terms of dual cannons versus beams. The visuals that they show for the Pulse Cannon was the type of visual that the Pulse Beams had. So 
to get the same visual stuff, you're gonna actually you're actually gonna be mixing weapon types to have the same visuals on if you if you really want to make a like NX escort refit like theme build. Um, so there are definitely those concerns. I th I think this combined with you know whatever new stuff that they're releasing with the airplane part two that they have they haven't announced whatever new voice acting is going to be around. Hopefully that's the that's going to make things pretty awesome. Um, please remember to stay safe and stay healthy. Um, I hope, at least in Star Trek Online, that Captain Corrin does get a lot more spotlight. Um, with the Hero Collector um, mag magazine, she did get um, hinted at very strongly that she's going to be the one that kills Jumpok eventually. Um, so hopefully she gets some more buildup so that that can hopefully happen in Part 3 um, of Year of Klingon. Hopefully that, that, that doesn't get delayed a super long time. But um, anyway, um, thank you all for watching. Um, it is nice to be back again. Um, I did take a little bit of time off because I wasn't really happy with the way that Cryptic was going in terms of things. I do think overall that Tier 6X is fine. Um, just a tiny little rant here for you all that actually want to listen to the end. Um, generally speaking, you know, back in 2014 was when Delta Rising came out. And so, and that was when they established the tier six stars, which were to be 3000 Zen. And then fleet versions of those would be, you know, 3000 Zen plus an extra 500 for the fleet module. It's been six years and, you know, things are more expensive, but things haven't changed in the game in terms of pricing. And so, sure, there's other different ways that they can make money. Let's market, you know, legendary starships. But overall, for a lot of the baseline, they needed... They, they definitely needed a way to to increase you know players to spend more on starships and so yeah the base price of starships with this if you're including the full tier 6x upgrade is now 4,000 zen instead of 3,000 I think that's just changing with with the times frankly um, is that super great not really should you really rush into tier 6x stuff for all of your different starships no definitely not upgrade the stuff that you know you're going to be using for a very long time if you don't think you're going to use it for a very long time i do not recommend doing that i'm i'm, I'm kind of curious frankly now that i think about it in terms of how players are going to, are going to you know players that are going to be doing example bills and things for new starships of how they're going to handle you know are they, are they going to test just the regular tier 6 version? Or are they going to demonstrate the Starship as, as a tier 6X version of a Starship? I guess each YouTube channel and Twitch channel are going to, I, I guess, have their own rules and for, for deciding all that. But anyway, again, thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.